the Morayshire Farmer's Son, who represents an important strand of Scottish entrepreneurship in 19th century Otago, and his wealthy and highly cultured bride. George Maclean got off to a solid start in life, being born into a farming family at Knockendoo, Morayshire, just south of Elgin in 1834. By the time he was six, the family had moved here to Scotston Hill Farm, which was considerably closer to Elgin. This meant that he could get his education at that town's grammar school. His father's farming establishment was substantial enough to require two employees to help with the farm work, and George also had two older brothers, one of whom subsequently took over the farm tenancy. But George must have realised reasonably early on that his future didn't lie in farming, nor in Morayshire. Instead, he somehow managed to study at St Andrews University, after which he began work as a clerk. In 1852, aged just 18, he set sail for Melbourne, where he took a position with the Colonial Bank and then the Oriental Bank. Ten years later, he moved to Dunedin to become manager of the Bank of New Zealand. Colonial banks were full of young men like George Maclean. Their Scottish education and business training considered the ideal qualification for a commercial career. His salary as a bank manager in Dunedin in 1862 was substantial. £600 plus a house to live in. And within a year it had been raised to £1,000. A sign of the premium placed on managerial skills in Dunedin's rapidly expanding commercial sector amidst the gold rush. But George Maclean was also highly ambitious. As his obituary noted, he was far-seeing, resourceful and enterprising, albeit with a banker's caution and a strong personality that he brought to bear on everything he did. After just three years in Dunedin, he abandoned banking and became a partner in the burgeoning mercantile firm of J and E B Cargill, who had wide-ranging interests as general merchants and stock and station agents. As Cargill and McLean, they were the local agents for the Albion Shipping Company, which dominated the transport of wool from here to Britain and of immigrants from there to Otago. In 1867, George married Isabella Holmes, one of the daughters of Matthew Holmes, an Ulster-born Dunedin businessman, who was one of the richest men in New Zealand through his extensive land holdings and also a significant political figure. Isabella Holmes was born into a wealthy home in Victoria, Australia in 1846 and spent many of her formative years in Australia and Scotland. She and her two sisters were tutored privately in art and music before being sent to a finishing school in Paris. The family moved to Dunedin in 1864 and settled at Anderson's Bay where Sintra was built, a 21-room mansion, one of the first of the grand houses built in this area. Isabella and her siblings were a sparkling addition to the upper levels of Dunedin society, and winning her hand was a real feather in the cap for the farmer's son from Elgin. The couple then built themselves a fine home, Hazelwood, here in Elder Street, Dunedin. George then followed his father on to politics, first on the Otago Provincial Council, then in 1871 he entered Parliament. He served as a minister in various governments until 1881 when ill health forced his retirement, but he was subsequently appointed to the upper chamber, the Legislative Council. In 1886, during a very volatile period of New Zealand politics, he was actually invited by the governor to form a government, but declined in favour of Robert Stout. Meanwhile, his business activities continued, notably as the first chairman of directors of the Union Steamship Company the Southern Hemisphere's largest shipping line with its headquarters here in central Dunedin, a post he held from 1875 to 1906. He led the company's opposition to the great maritime strike of 1890, defeating the strikers. But his hard-nosed approach didn't sit well with the new Liberal government that came to power at the end of that year. His time at the top was coming to an end. It was a changing of the guard, really. The group of Dunedin's merchant princes, who had emerged as leaders from the 1860s boom period, were all getting old and passing the torch on to a new generation. As one of their most notable representatives, 
George Maclean was knighted in 1909, a fitting accolade to his tremendous contribution to Otago life over almost 50 years of business leadership. In retirement, he supported his wife who was a leading member of Dunedin society in her own right. As well as bringing up their six children, she played a key role in Dunedin's social and artistic circles. She was a foundation member of the Dunedin Public Art Gallery and helped it build its own premises here in 1907. That original art gallery building is now part of this museum complex, so it seems very appropriate that Isabella should be smiling down at us right beside her great contribution to Dunedin's cultural life. George Maclean died in 1917, aged 82, and Isabella in 1923, aged 77.